everyone, this is Robin. Welcome to MyPinkStamper.com. If you're new to my channel, I'm so happy that you're with me today. I am going to be spotlighting the Flowering Rain Boots stamp set along with the Rain Boots dies. And I have a super adorable card. You're going to love it. If you have the materials, make this card along with me. Leave a comment below and let me know that you made it. Um, and also, I am going to be doing a little bit of heat embossing on this card. If you are recreating this, you can just use what you have if you don't have any of these supplies. If you would like to order any of these supplies, as always, you can find them directly below in the description, or you can go directly to shopmypinkstamper.com if you're in the United States. Okay, so I'm not sure how long this project will take. It's just so adorable, and there are a few little steps on here. I want to kind of spotlight one of the dies that's in this um die set, uh, the rain boots, it's, you're kind of wondering like, what does this do? So I'm going to show you, we're going to make a fun little background with that. And I have everything ready to go. We will start with, let's go ahead and start with this strip of granny apple green. And it's cut at one and a quarter by four and three quarters inches. I'll have everything um, listed on the screen right here, the sizes that I'm using, if you'd like to recreate this with me. Okay, so I am going to, I grabbed a, our small grid paper and I'm going to be using our Versamark. This is the go-to pad for heat embossing because the heat embossing crystals just stick right to it. So I have our white embossing powder and right now you can just get the embossing powder in the two sets. We have the basics, which is, has the white, clear, and black. And then we have the... Uh, metallics collection and I use all six of those so I actually I get multiple packages as you can see because I go through so much embossing powder so this card that you're seeing me make today I'm probably going to be making a dozen of these to send out to customers when you place a an order on my online website shopmypinkstamper.com I personally hand make cards for everyone and send it with your thank you package. So I'm going to make a dozen of this design because it's so cute. This one will take me a little bit longer, but it's so worth it, honestly. All right. So I just put the powder on here and I just tapped it off. And now I'm going to take our heat tool and I'm going to put it on uh, the second setting. And you can just point it straight at your crystals or you can do it from underneath if you like to do that. However you like to do it, let me show you what underneath looks like. You can kind of watch it melt when you heat it from underneath. Or you can emboss on the top, it's up to you. Okay, so did you see how this just popped it out? I don't know if you've never heat embossed. This is a super fun technique. Technique. I'm having problems speaking this morning. I'm not gonna edit it out. You'll just hear me on my, I'm filming this on a Monday, <laughs> Monday morning office voice. Um, but when I was first introduced to Stampin' and Stampin' Up, boy, well, Stampin' and Stampin' Up, the very first thing I ever saw was heat embossing. And it was a little butterfly in white and I was hooked. So if you've never seen embossing, it's pretty amazing. So let's go ahead and we'll do our stamping next. And I have a piece of our basic white cardstock. I'm gonna grab my pad of paper again really quick. Because I'm using the photopolymer, I want something underneath, and I might actually just grab, do I have my foam, foam mat? I'm just gonna grab a foam mat. Okay, so for this one, we don't really need a lot of the paper. I am using, we'll start with the Granny Apple Green ink, and we're going to be stamping the tulip top and the tulip bottom. So we're stamping these two stamps right here. And then the sentiment that we just stamped says, our friendship is naturally beautiful. So it's a very great occasion that you can use anytime you want to a friend probably, unless it's someone that you're, you want to be friends with. That would be sweet too. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this one here. And it's nice and do you see how it's distinctive? This is a distinctive stamp set so you can see different uh, levels. It looks like you shaded it, but it's just one stamp. 
And then we're going to be using Melon Mambo. And we're going to stamp the tulips, but we're stamping the tulips uh, not, now if you wanted to just stamp these right on top, if you're making a project, that would work too. But we have dies that will cut them out so I can layer them. So I wanna have a little bit of a space in between so I can cut those out with my dies. And now it's time to pull out my favorite tool in my craft room, which is my die cutting machine. This is my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. I realize I didn't have my lights on over here. Okay, I'm going to put this on here and then I am grabbing the die that goes around the tulip top and the tulip bottom, just like that. Okay, just frame those around there. And the trick that I do, I know you can put washi tape down over them. Sometimes when I'm using washi tape, it still kind of pulls up my paper. I don't know why, I'm just special that way, I guess. But I like to just lay this right here, flat on top, and then I just kind of hold it for just a second. It's super easy to do that, look at that. And then it doesn't move at all and I don't have to worry about pulling off washi tape and all that kind of stuff. So now, let me take off my dies. I have my tulip bottoms, or my leaves, I guess you could call them. And then I have the tulips on the top. Okay, now I'm going to grab a piece of vellum cardstock. And what I'm going to do here is I'm taking, this is a layering circle, and I'm just going to put it right on the top right here. And just run this through. And show this to you. It's a nice vellum. I like to use those for accents super fast. Now, as I had told you at the beginning of this tutorial, I am going to show you how to make a super fun background. And I'm using Bermuda Bay. This is a quarter sheet, so it's a little bit bigger than the uh, layer that I'm going to show you in a bit. We are going to be cutting this out three times. So let's do this. If you're doing this with me, let's do this together. Okay, so we're gonna take this piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock, and this is cut at, let's see, what is this one? Three and a half by four and three quarters. And we're gonna do, um, I like to use our sponge daubers and just some glue. So our liquid glue, let me see. I just used this, there we go. Liquid glue, um, it's the multi-purpose. And I am going to, let me get another background piece ready to go because I don't want any messes. All right, because this is going to go off, let me show you all. This is going to go off the side just a little bit. So kind of make a note of that and try not to put glue on the very ends, the very tips, but we're going to be lining this up and we're going to add it three times. So I'm just gonna grab some glue and it kind of just sponge it in, squish it into your sponge dauber and then I'm just going to add it on here. You don't want it to go show on the front, so just really get it on there. There we go. And I'm going to pull you back on the screen, line this up so it's kind of even, and I'll line it up on the bottom. This is actually going to be my top. I'm gonna to flip it over, but it was easier for me to line it up like this. Okay, so just really hold it down, and look at how cool this looks already. Just this background with the same color, um, on the same color. It's really cool. I'm going to grab my paper snips and I'm just going to turn this over and I'm just going to snip off the edges that are hanging off, hanging over. Okay, just like that. Throw the rest in my garbage. Now we're going to take this strip that we embossed on and let's flip our card over so this is the top. And I'm going to grab my, I'm using the Stampin' Seal to grab whatever adhesive you have and it works for you. And I'm going to put this over to the left so it's flush. 
There we go. So it goes across the bottom like this. I'm actually trying to utilize these colors because uh, I had a team challenge this week that was a color challenge, and I wanted all my team members to use these colors, these four colors, and to create a project. So I'm participating as well, and it's super fun. Okay, so now I'm adding this to a piece of our Melon Mambo cardstock. It's four by five and a quarter. This is a longer video. I was thinking it was going to be quick, but I guess you can't be quick with embossing in a detailed background, can you? Okay, so now I have this like this, and I'm going to grab our, this is our set of twine, the Baker's Twine Essential Pack. So just grab some white twine, and I'm going to grab, this is just my regular kitchen tape for like wrapping presents and stuff. I like to use it uh, for attaching ribbon on the back. It just holds it a little tighter than if you put adhesive. I just know it's going to be there forever. So I'm going to do one across the bottom, and then I'm going to do two. And I want that to be up a little bit. I want to cover the, there we go. I'm gonna have a little bit of a space in between, just like that, and just kind of hold it really tight. And then, there we go. Now we'll cut that. Now while it's upside down, oh, I don't want to cut that one, there we go. While it's upside down, I'll go ahead and add my adhesive to the bottom or the back. It's not the bottom. Okay, there we go. And this is my card base. This, this is our thick, basic white. It's cut at five and a half by four and, a, and five and a half by eight and a half. And I didn't score this one. Sometimes I score it at four and a quarter, and you can just use a paper trimmer to score it. Ours has a scoring blade attached, which is nice. Okay, so I'm gonna put this, ooh, ha, 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 it has adhesive. Okay, you like how there's a nice and thick border? Did I say this was, the Melon Mambo was three and three quarters by five inches? I hope I did. All right, okay, we have that ready. Now let's go ahead and take this vellum circle and I'm going to attach, I'm just gonna grab the liquid glue since it's right here. I'm going to add, well it is here, but it's a little cloggy, all right. I'm going to add some of the liquid glue, kind of pull it, dot it, and then pull it towards you or away from you, however you're crafting. Okay, let's get it nice and thin. All right, now I'm going to add this to the bottom of the vellum circle like this, okay? And then I'm going to take my tulips, the tulip tops, And we will add these to the top. And there's a spot for each of the tulips. If you look, you can see where they're supposed to be attached. And just hold that down until it sets into the vellum. Okay, now we're gonna turn this over. And one thing I learned when I was at Stampin' Up is when they're designing their stamps and their dies, they really think about if they're gonna be big enough for our dimensionals, they're going to be big enough for our mini dimensionals. And I thought that was so cool because I just thought, this is, I always think, oh, this is so perfect that this fits on this die cut or this stamp and they, uh, it's actually, it's not a coincidence. They think about it beforehand, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of really smart and creative people that work with Stampin' Up. Okay, I guess apparently he is going to be working in the hallway next to my video. That's okay. <laughs> I told you about the painters. Okay, there is our finished card. Isn't it so cute? It's one of my favorites. I love how it's bright and happy. It's almost springtime here in Utah. I cannot wait. I hope you guys have a great day. Please leave me a comment below. I love to hear from you. I read every single one that you every single note that you leave me. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.